Good Wednesday afternoon, everyone. I'm meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff, joined by our executive weather producer, Terry Ellison. Uh, amazing Wednesday. Yeah, we just weren't we weren't planning to do one of these today, but it just was turned out to be such a remarkable day yeah. that we feel like it's almost breaking weather news how warm it is outside. Um, it's funny, like you don't you. There's, uh, just from looking outside, a lot of people are, but this is a bit much, I feel like. I was just at two schools. Both of them had a little kid ask, like, is this crazy that we're getting warm? Yeah. They're, they're sweating so much on the recess, uh, on the yeah. playground. Uh, yeah, it is uh, I very mean, out of the ordinary. I had my air conditioner on last night. Yep. And I probably will do the same tonight. I had it on in the car when I went out for lunch. Like, this doesn't feel right on November 6th. Yep. Um, so, so, so let's hop into it. Anyhow. <laughs> How hot have, are we talking right now? Well, Boston, for the first time this late in the season, hit 81 degrees, uh, above 80 degrees. High today, if we can take a look at the graphics. Today, 81 in Boston, 78 in Worcester. Uh, really just a lot of 80s all over the place. And yep. again, uh, we've only hit 80 one other time in the month of November, um, but never this late in November have right. we hit 80. So, um, you know, we are in uncharted territory, not just record for the day, but literally record for all time this late in the season. Yeah, that's uh, incredible to think of. That is uh, that is something. And just to, just to kind of bring you up to date. So interestingly enough, the old records for today were just two years ago. Um, 76 and 72, and we smashed both of them in Boston and in Worcester. And it's safe to say it's smashed when you beat it by five degrees, five degrees. or six degrees in Worcester. Absolutely, not even close. And we kind of, it's funny, we were forecasting a record as far back as the weekend, and you don't typically, you don't forecast a record high like three, four days out. It was just really so obvious, and, and we, we were still too low on the forecast. Yep. Uh, I don't, it's just so hard to forecast an all time record that far out. I believe a week ago, we were with Eric, yes, and he had said, "I'm watching for yes. next week." I think he was planning his tea time already for today. Yeah, exactly, sure enough, that's what he did earlier this morning. Yeah, so the lady, latest 80 degree temperature in Boston history. Uh, the prior record was November 2nd, back in 1950, mm -hmm. and it's really, really hard to get those 80s to stick around. You really need just an incredibly <laughs> mild perfect air mass, setup the no. perfect setup. The last year, last year we got our last 80 of the season back in October, October which, 28th. Which was very late. So it's last still very year late, it was yeah. remarkably late. And this year we're what, nine days later? Um, so, you know, we're just, we seem like we're just pushing these records out. Each, yeah. each year, each decade, we're making more and more warm temperature records. Um, and speaking of records, um, so there it is. The latest, basically, November, go from today on. So basically November 6th through the winter, through the end of December. Um, this, these are the warmest five days we've ever recorded. You can see it's never been done. We've never hit 80 or, or 81 this late in the season before. And again, kind of crushing the old record. When crushing it. Yeah. Yes. And all these were done, the, the most recent one in 1993. So, I mean, we've had nothing anywhere near this warm this late in the season for yeah. at least 30 years. Uh, also, record highs this year. We've had five record highs in Boston. Uh, We've kind of spread them out a little bit, except for the last three, where we've picked them up over the last really 14 days or so. Yeah, we, we're getting basically a record high per week at this point, which, yeah. which is not uh, which is ideal. Not normal. <laughs> yeah, uh, started on October 21st. We actually saw so Halloween, if you remember, you know, was not on this list. But it was still, I believe, 78 for a high that day. It just missed. Just missed. Just missed and then yeah. the following day on November 1st, we got 79 for a record. And then yep. today, there's today's record. So the, today was the fifth record high uh, in Boston this year. And on the other flip side, we have not set any record lows this year. And that's a, that's a pattern that we're seeing more and more. Yep. Those minimum temperatures are getting higher and higher, warmer exactly. and warmer. Exactly. Uh, and so what's going on? This is obviously a pattern that we're kind of stuck in, yeah. a persistent pattern. It, the atmosphere almost has its own mind, right? It, it's kind of stuck in this pattern. It needs a wrench to be thrown in it. Sometimes that's a tropical system or a right. nor'easter to, to really just mix things up a little bit, but we're stuck in this pattern of uh, a trough will come in. It's a mild or seasonable trough. Then we'll get that big ridge that builds back in, high pressure moves off, and then we're back to right. what we're seeing. Yeah, I think as far as the heat goes, and we have the three check marks here, I think, again, like you said, it's the persistent pattern. We get in these in the, for different times. Like if you think we're back in 2015, we were in a different, very different kind of pattern. We were in a yeah. very cold, snowy pattern. We get into the atmosphere, it likes to repeat itself. Secondly, uh, the drought can lead to more heat. And, and basically what that is about is, you know, when you have dry air, 
when it, and it's hot out, it can it basically all the heat basically goes to heating the air. It's more efficient it's more to efficient heat, as yeah. As opposed to having you know a wet ground or moist vegetation, and that will absorb a lot of the heat. So yep. a lot of times when you have drought, you can get a lot of high temperature records. Yep. And of course, climate change. Absolutely, and we have a few slides coming up about that climate change. But uh, we talk about the persistent pattern that we're in. High pressure is over us, so we'll get those cool nights. You know, a, a cool night or two every seven yeah, days. Yeah, we had a frost Monday morning. Yeah, I was yep. scraping the windshield, and here we are, 48 hours later, and it's 81 degrees. Absolutely. So then the high moves off into the Atlantic Ocean. The flow around high pressure just pumps in some of that warmer air. And this is basically just the repeating pattern over yep. the last three, four weeks. Um, and it, and know, no rain, importantly, too. No right? rain either, yep. right. Uh, so one of our oldest observation sites in southern New England is atop in Mount... The country, uh, yeah. yeah, in the country, is atop Blue Hill Observatory. And this is a graphic that we've been updating for a long time, mm -hmm. since before I started mm -hmm. here at WBZ. And you can see that slice of the pie, that blue slice, that is one top 10 coldest month since 2010. And then in the meantime, we've had 54 top 10 warmest months. So what does that tell you? You look at that and that I says- mean, I don't, anyone that's disputing that some sort of climate change or warming is happening, that there's your, there's your graphic, right? right? Um, you see all the different criteria there on the side. Uh, the first, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the, the sixth, the 10th, right. warmest on winters on, on record. On, 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 on. Yeah. And this is a, this is a rec data set records that, that goes back well over hundred years yep. and it's been kept very diligently. So this is, this is certainly even more so than the Boston record. I feel like the Blue Hill record um, even kind of means more. I love the Blue Hill record because even though we've built up around Boston, yeah. our sites have changed mm -hmm. locations. It used to be downtown, now it's at Logan Airport. The data sets have, have changed a little bit. No one's building a top. Nobody's touching the top of Blue Hill. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it is a very apples to apples comparison mm -hmm. to what's been happening for the last 150 years. So most, when you look at the fastest warming seasons, you're wondering like, is this just a fall thing? Obviously it's not, climate change affects all the seasons in different fashions, but mostly winter, if you look across the Eastern path of the United States, those blue dots, to signify that winter technically has been the fastest warming season over the last several decades. Yep. Uh, but fall is right behind. Fall literally is by this. Is graph, in second place. Is in second place, yep. and I feel like we're catching up rapidly. Uh, think of just think about the last bunch of falls that we've had. It just feels like summer is almost always extended into October, if not November. It just yep. feels like we've been warmer than. I mean, certainly you can say that about winter, but fall, I feel like. Not, not so much spring. We've had some cold springs, but fall, it seems like it's always warmer than average. Yeah, and, and we see it that the, the seasons, the distinctness of the seasons yeah. are blending a little bit more, right? We're not getting those harsh winters, so it's fading into spring a little bit faster. Right. We're not fading into fall or from fall into winter as quickly. You don't get those shots of cold on the front end of the season. So I think we're just blending the seasons yeah. out a little bit. Too. And a lot of this could have to do with the war oceans have never been warmer either. And so right. So obviously the fall is the season where you tend to get your warmest ocean temperatures in like August, September. So if you have a really warm ocean, warmer than average, right off our coast, yep. it's harder to not get warmer temperatures along right. with it. So that's another factor there. Um, but these, these graphs, by the way, is courtesy of Climate Central. They're great, uh, great partners. Great partners, yep. Uh, we also have more warm fall days. When you look at the fall season, meteorological fall being September, October, November, over the last 50 three or so odd years, we have seen mm -hmm. more and more warmer than average days coming in. In fact, we're now 11 days over that. And when you crunch the numbers, that equals about 2.2 or so degrees above where we were 50 years ago. And that's, that may not sound like much, but that's a, that's a pretty big jump for 50 years. You, yeah. see the, you see those types of numbers over many, many, even hundreds of years, but at least to say fall is warming and it's warming quickly. And, and if we could go back to that just mm -hmm. real quick, when we're entering into the fall season, we get a lot of leading up into winter, the first frost and freezes, right? And yep. the difference of, of two degrees can mean a lot, right? When you're looking at that 32 degree number, if you don't get it and it's pushed back by two or three weeks, you're talking about a longer, perhaps growing longer, season. Longer or allergy season. Exactly, all, all of those yeah. things. So two degrees, it may not mean a lot to you at home, but you're talking about 
really it's just like we say inches matter miles matter well degrees matter in Absolutely. this case yeah and of course all this warmth um, not helping the brush fire situation yeah. we've had a red flag warning all day today I haven't seen or heard of any major new brush fires I know right. some of the other ones are still smoldering and they're still working to get them contained I just checked air now mm -hmm. no new fires knock on wood that's we'll good. find that's something good, right yeah. um, and the good the wind that's in place it's actually kind of mixing up the atmosphere a little bit. So the smoke issues that we had early this week uh, with the air quality alerts, at the moment, not an yeah, issue. I was concerned today more so if, you know, with 30, 40 mile an hour gusts, if any new brush fires had, you know, had uh, come up, then it's, it's gonna spread oh, yeah. so rapidly. Yep. Um, so thankfully, as of yet anyways, we haven't heard about any of that, but the drought continues. We will get an update to this tomorrow, yeah. uh, tomorrow morning. And I'm assuming that that area uh, that's now in Eastern Mass, which is severe drought, it went from basically 0% to 14% over the last week. It'll, it could double again um, and get further extended, you know, when we see the update tomorrow. Yeah, and I think it was what, 2022? Yes. That we had the last severe last drought. Severe drought. Um, and you know, like, uh, this is what I would encourage you to do is next time you're driving along and you see a pond or a reservoir or something like that, just look to see how low some of those water levels are. Yep. A lot of that uh, really kind of reserve that's been taken away was over the last three months. We were running either above average for mm -hmm. the first half of the year or average through let's say April to maybe June, but then July on it's been incredibly dry with just a, a slight surplus one of those yeah, months and I then it's like just been dry. I want to say we're closing in on eight, nine inches below average since July and just in the fall, five or six inches below. Right. And again, short term drought, it's not a, it's not an epic California West Coast drought by yep. any means, but having ramifications and now even, you know, as we explained earlier, maybe getting the temperatures a few degrees higher yep. because it's so dry out. Um, and again, driest fall to date, what Boston and Worcester are both either number one or number two, and this is since September 1st. Uh, we've certainly talked about this ad nauseum yep. that, um, you know, we are basically with what, three weeks left, three and a half weeks left of November, um, closing in. I can't, you know, and at, at this point, there's no major pattern change. No. Coming in fact, as we look at the rainfall forecast for the next really seven days or so, uh, you're not talking about a ton of rain that will be uh, mil building on in. Um, in really fact, much of any, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like maybe some in northern New England, but this is through Sunday mm -hmm. and no raindrops. We do have a chance for rain heading into Monday and some models indicate maybe a little bit of a soaker, but you know, we have to look at the persistent pattern that a lot of these times that the systems have been rolling through, they've been just kind of drying up. Now this is cross our fingers hopeful yeah, that we can get uh, something yeah the if you look if you look at some of the long range charts you know sometimes say quarter to a half an inch of water i i would i would if i were a betting man i'd go on the low end just because drought begets drought and it seems like all of these yeah. things tend to dry up you know when in one of these patterns but at the very least it does look like some rain coming on monday i know it's a holiday weekend yep. so um but at this point i think we need to take the rain we can get it yeah we can't be choosers so <laughs> Um, and then the next chance after this, it looks a little bit better later and next week uh, could be a little more, finally, maybe a juicier front frontal passage that comes through, but we'll see. We will yeah. see. Yeah. Do we have the seven day forecast? Uh, I don't think we do okay. as we speak, but, okay. um, you know, basically nice, nice weekend, dry, dry weekend ahead. And then the next chance of rain being Monday. So I will be at the DAV 5k at Castle Island with uh, Tiffany Chan. I encourage everyone if they Saturday morning, Saturday morning, uh, encourage everyone to stop on by, uh, thank a veteran, um, this upcoming weekend as we are entering into veterans day weekend, as good you mentioned, it's that. good, good weather for that. Yeah. Um, it's always a, a toss up there too. I've been there for mm -hmm. very cold mornings. I've been there for, uh, very mild mornings and fortunately will be dry. I think one year. I got on a phone call and they had to like push it back. I think that was in 2022. Yes. There was like a tropical storm or something. Yes, I do. Um, but um, either way, should be good weather. And it's also a really great opportunity to see a sunrise. If you haven't seen a sunrise from Castle Island, I encourage everyone to do that. Mm -hmm. It is spectacular from that spot. Right. Um, we appreciate everyone tuning in to our weather chat in the comments below. Put what you think our weather name should be. At this point, I'm just going to chat GPT it or something. Yeah, right? whatever. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but we, I should say that tomorrow, if everyone's wondering, it will be as high. Tomorrow will not be 80 degrees again, but yep. it could certainly reach 70 or in the low 70s. And again, remember, average highs, I think, are 54, 55 right now. So no immediate sort of relief uh, from the heat. And it's going to be another mild night. So I know I'll be putting my air conditioning on. Yeah, uh, definitely. Anyway.
Well, we appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll have many more of these in the future, but for now, enjoy the warm conditions and be safe.